can get the right check to work. Right. You got it. Yep. So. And welcome back, everyone. All right. So um, we're going to be changing up the strategy for how you guys are going to be going through Wandering Monsters because Wandering Monsters can just be boring. And so I've selected two fights that you guys are going to be going through. Um, and then after that, we're going to say that the rest of the time you guys can... We're going to hand wave the rest and say you guys got through all the other challenges um, and skip most of the wandering and uh, get all through to uh, this part here. I'm going to pull in a few more characters. are able to see and everything yep, can confirm all right this one is an open exploration map because i am not utilizing um this map for multiple places the idea is you do want to get down to the south of the map and uh that will provide the exit for you to go through and I will leave it to you, Riles, to decide which directions you're going to do and what you're going to perform. I still have a black loading screen, so just put me behind them, preferably. So this place is... Let me make sure it's the right, right place. Just to give you guys an idea on where you are. Okay, this is still the Plane of Bones, so um, this is basically the walls are filled with bones, um, and the, the, there's no sky. It's basically just one gigantic cave. Spooky. You know, for as long as we've been traveling, this wouldn't be nearly so bad if it wasn't quite so monotonous. Getting thoroughly sick of ivory bone walls everywhere. At this point, I think he's just trying to keep up the aesthetic that the name already had. Oh. Well, let it never said that demons had imagination. Because, I mean, when a place gets named the Ivory Labyrinth, you, you kind of have to follow a certain decorating pattern after that. Uh, I suppose. But would it kill them to put up a few wall hangings now and then? Turn a corner, we find some curtains. Perhaps some tusks. Do you throw rugs? Spruce up the place. How long have we been walking, anyway? Seems like weeks. Too long, I'd say. You have been in this specific uh, realm, this specific uh, subsection for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. You have been traveling in the uh, the labyrinth and trying to travel over there for now eighteen days. Oh. Seems like an eternity. Yep, two and a half weeks. This is going to mark our longest excursion outside of our own plane. Yes, well, with that said, let's continue on and perhaps we can be done with this place. Hmm. Which way should we go? Uh continue south or go west uh, Satra, which way do you think lies the most direct path uh, 
guess I can attempt a survival roll if things actually want to freaking work. I can roll for you if you need me to. Uh, the moment you, uh, you think that going south would be helpful. Then south it is. Looks like I'm gonna have to go through some doors over here. As this is about as far south as we can go. Yes, you see two large uh, double doors, one leading west and one leading south out of the west room. Uh, would Bosco be kind enough to examine the doors to uh, make sure they aren't uh, trapped? Will he will cast acute senses and then do that? Just reminding myself, encountering doors like this, this is probably like the 30th set we've encountered in the recent days or so. Nothing significant about it. Nah, it's just like the last door and the door before that, the door before that, the door before that. Okay, so no special buffs going up. No alarm. But you never know. If you pass your pass your hundredth door, that could be the one that you win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they look like two stone double doors. Uh, the uh, although these the room that uh, Reed and Cetra and the other guys currently standing in, it looks like there's a number of bones that aren't part of the walls. They look like they've been decomposing for quite some time, though. Ooh, activity. Uh, hmm. I suppose we could go south. So once everyone's up here in the positions that they want to be in, you here will open the door. I'm going to chuck this damn monitor across the room. I still cannot <laughs> see the damn thing after switching to another server. Why is dynamic lighting being like it wants to be done? What do you mean? Can you see through it? Yes. Oh, okay. We're not good DM. I can see through this. We can see through the darkness. I can freaking see! Yay! Woohoo! I was muted, but that was almost exactly the same expression we both said at the same time. See, if we want to keep going south, I think I see another door going southward over here in the, uh, the southernmost uh, corridor. Maybe there we could continue down the hall. Well, uh, Satra, which way? to see if there's anything around. 
can do perception. Cetra thinks going to the west would be helpful. Alright, then westward we shall go. Good to know. Thank you, Reed. Oh, looks like the path does curve a bit down here. Looks like a dead end, though. Also, I think Jorn just put himself through a wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the monsters usually try to do that. I didn't realize I had Earth Glide. <laughs> it's an illusory wall. <laughs> What if this entire labyrinth is one elaborate illusion? Give me a perception check. Sure. I suppose it would be redundant for me to mention how frustrating I find this maze-like corridors. They make no fucking sense. Genuine cursing out of read, my goodness. I prefer order. This is just chaos. <laughs> And was that perception from everyone or just the folks in front? Everyone. Bam. Got a lot of cute senses. Bosco manages to see that not only is the world an illusion, uh, entire reality is he sees giant figures looming over him, rolling uh, giant polyhedrons. Squinting his eyes, he realized that there is no such thing as separate items and objects. They're all one and the same, just separate atoms. <laughs> Card. Um. I hear doors behind. Oh. <clears throat> I hear doors behind us somewhere. Closing. Behind us. And he will point somewhere in this direction, I would assume. Mm -hmm. uh, that does not bode well. Well, let's be on our guard then. Yes, indeed. And while we're walking, Reed will start his buff cycle. Was this a new day, by the way? Yes. Yes. I, it's, it sounds like we have a spellcaster on our hands. Hmm. What makes you say that? I hear someone chanting words of power. Can you tell from where? Same direction. Which direction again? Somewhere over here. Could be here, could be down further that way. Okay, I guess we can 
go back and check that door. Oh, wait, I see peoples. Those look unique. Oh, oh, it's them. Hey, look, Setra, you got your fight. Yay. <laughs> this time there's more than one. All right, so just to clarify the buffs, everyone has normal heroism, not epic, not mythic, just normal. Thank you. For a reminder as to what they do. Everybody on here, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Yep, and Julian too. You here. Alrighty. They got all of their swords drawn. All six of them. Okay. Uh, let's see, I think I will. Move over to here and cast Divine Favor upon myself. And that's me. I was supposed to say, I swear I hit the button. Cetra, what you doing? open fire so I don't have the normal heroism for a buff so is it better just not to click it and just add two to everything or do you want me just to click it go ahead and click it well it's plus four that's what I'm asking it's only oh, one Oh, she only has a mythic heroism so, on her bar. So if you if you look at your buff section, and you see in the top right corner the common buffs drop down, you'll find heroism listed there, and that will add the normal version of heroism to your sheet. Okay. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, it's just plus two to attack. When you're doing it to? The only one I can see right now. It's this one. Hey, okay, still 209 damage. That's a good opening salvo. Yeah, first blood. Reed, what you doing? Uh, Reed is going to move here. And ready in action to cast a spell when he sees two of those creatures in range.
Joran. Joran's going to cast Righteous Might. Okay. He's getting big. Okay. Go big or go home. Anything else, Troy? Okay, moving over there. Yeah, it's just trying to move. Oops. Bosco, what are you doing? Um. That slightly changed what I'm going to do. Bosk is going to cast Shadow Bard, and Soothing Performance is going to come into effect, and then as a swift action, he'll start uh, Inspire Courage. And that is all. Uh, let's see, so Julian is going to move here, and I actually don't see our angel guy. He got dismissed last time, remember? Yep, he went home. Try shooting at this girl here and misses um and then a wall of knives appears behind reed I think and she's then, trying to make a point. And then you see her duck out of uh, sight. You hear. Hmm. Well, since we've never actually fought one of these before, it might be good to uh, see what we know. So let's see here. much can I recall of Merylith's? Uh, let's see. Merylith's. They are chaotic, demon, evil, extraplanar, mythic. Um, they have um, six weapons. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten attacks around. They have a constrict. Um, combat reflexes. Um... They have spell resistance, and they can summon. Okay. Uh, do I proceed forward? that I uh, proceed forward a little bit. Uh, not going further than that, though. Don't want to separate myself too far from the party. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cetra, you currently don't see any either of the other. Okay. 
Um. I guess I'll do a fleet charge so I can at least do an attack on my way after I move. do a single shot though since I have to do double move technically um yeah so uh yeah you shoot her and uh, she gets some damage. Read. All right. Um, seeing that we're being drawn forward, cast uh, Reed will cast haste on the group in the back. Don't think I can get you here in this. No. Nope. Actually, I can. Uh, he'll pull out a widen meta magic rod. Uh, so instead of thirty, Stop. it's sixty. So he won't be able to get Cetra, but Stop. everyone, everyone in the back here will get a. Uh, we'll, we'll go mythic on this. Regular, not augmented. And he'll leave himself, uh, you know, back to the wall here. Okay. Alright. This girl's gonna take a five foot step up. And... Go ahead, Blender. Like I think two attacks miss on her. What's your AC over there, uh, etc. Trying to find it. Hold on. It's thirty. All right. So the fourth attack on the first long sword misses, and the second attack with that one. Rolled a natural one. Let me see what she does. Okay, so she's gonna impact herself with the damage. She, she's she's flailing around a lot with all them weapons, so it's yeah. not surprising she'd hit herself. Okay, and does let's see so all the rest of them hit except the second uh, long sword on the offhand. And then the tail slap hits, which means we get a free grapple attempt. And then I believe that beats your CMD, so you get pulled into... The tail slap is nearly dead. Heal. Uh, let's see which way she went. Uh, Cetra went down this way. Everyone ran in this general direction. Okay. Uh, we are going to... Let's see.
All right, uh, Cetra, you will heal 150. Thank you. And it's the end. Let's go. All right, first move action. We'll just move to try to get an idea of what's going on. I'm just checking the range on something real quick. Just a reminder, Jordan, you do have two move actions to use if you wanted to. There we go. Alright. Good to know. Okay, that's one move action. Um, Bosco is going to cast Versatile Performance and bring in Inspire Greatness. Uh, he's going to use that on Bosco, Yuhi, and Cetra. We all get 2d10 temporary hit points. Nice. points um i believe inspire greatness is on the bus list as well if you wanted to add that to your sheet and bosco is going to use his second move action to oh, to get up here she is going to make an AO. Uh, we're just going to get the first one on this one, none of the rest. 56 versus AC for 22 points of damage. Yeah, that'll hit. Few things that's not hitting. Bosco is going to use a mythic point to gain another standard action, and he's going to use class mimic to grab Cetra's favorite enemy uh, ability. And that is his turn. Uh, let's see. Julian gets the extra speed. He's going to move to here and is going to try to attack. And with Good try, though. Yuhia, Joran, and the rest of the party. Yuhia. Alrighty. Let's see if I can at least get up here and help Cetra. I will uh, smite the one that currently has her grappled. Okay. character she freaks out due to enabling all these buffs. Makes sense. Right, and single attack. Oop. 
Ooh, crit for the double damage. 64 and double damage, yep. So a fortitude save if you be so kind. Yep. 38 spot. Yep, so just uh just staggered for one round. Stetra, you're currently grappled. I'm trying to find one you to roll to get out of that, but I can't find it. Escape artist or a grapple check. Which is CM something? CMB. Yep, so either that or uh, Escape Artist if you have it. Yeah, I'm a bad uh, ranger. I do not have a really good escape artist at all. <laughs> Looking at a 61 grapple check. Okay, so she did not escape. I can't even help you on that one. I'm never gonna be able to get 61. All right, guys, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try Three. and kill it faster. Uh, how high does the blade wall extend relative to the ceiling or top of the walls? It goes all the way up and down. Alright. Do you have caster level in order to make that? Alright. And I recognize this as a typical blade barrier? Yep. Okay. Alright, so Reed is going to move... Tuck in behind Jorn here. And seeing the two Merylis. Uh, given their weapons... Are they medium, large, light? They are large. Large long swords. Large long swords. Heavy yeah. blades. Okay. One handers. Alright, so. Pointing to number seven. He is going to target four of those blades and try to warp them. Okay. SR, please. Yep, as soon as I get the... Uh, I don't have that macro, damn it. All right, hold on. I don't, I don't use it often enough. Not the right one. Yes, that is the right one, that's just terrible. I'm gonna uh, ring surge that. Probably still nowhere near enough. 24? No. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. You're probably better off free rolling. Oh, that's right, we can do that, can't we? Yep. What is it? One it's mythic for that? Yep, one mythic to re roll. Alright. Sorry if I do that? Uh, yeah, I think you could just do it. What is it? Once per combat or something like that? I don't remember this. It's an immediate action. Which he hasn't used up yet since the uh, the ring was the one that did the surge. Yeah. That's base so. 24 with the ring surge after that. But he can't do both, right? No. So 24 is not good enough. Okay, so that still fails. Um, For his extra move action, he'll slip his uh, Wand of Dimension door and just hold it out where Jorn could very easily uh, touch it, if he were so inclined. This girl's got to make a grapple check. One single grapple check. 
Oh yeah, that's definitely going to beat hers. And uh, let's see. That means I get my constrict damage. Where's my constrict? And that is D2. Do the CMDs change every combat they need to actually verse, or is it always a standard 61? It, it, the CMD chain it does it keeps the same for the most part. Um, so she has a 61 versus grapples. So 27 cons damage to constrict, and I need a fortitude save. Cool, because my highest I can get with a nat 20 is 53. A nat well, 20 would auto succeed. Yep, since uh, CMB checks are considered attack rolls, and thus also fall under the. If it's a 20, it succeeds. Don't forget, you have 13 temporary hit points, so that would take off from the 27. Would Reed have uh, his immediate action available again since I did that during my turn? Well, you just used your immediate action, didn't you? During my turn, though. Usually you only lose it when it's not your turn when you use those. Well, usually you refresh your, your resources at the beginning of your turn, if I remember correctly, right? For most things, but immediate action, uh, you only can't use it until the end of your next turn if you do it out of turn. So if he used it now, he wouldn't have it for his next turn. Right. I thought it was it, where... Uh, I'll have to look at the things for it. Okay, we'll but, say we'll uh, say no for convenience, then. Well, I still need her to make a fortitude save. Forty is good enough, and let's see. All right, so this will reduce this one by that. Oh, I need to do plus five on this. And she is going to unload on you here. You cannot use another immediate or switch until after your next turn if you use an immediate that one is not currently. Okay, so it refreshes at the end of your turn. Yeah. So if you use an immediate action during your turn... You'd be good to go for afterwards. You'd be good to go for immediate action during someone else's turn. Okay, yeah, so you can use immediate action. Okay, I want to liberate in command such a uh, when convenient. Okay, go for it. It's convenient right now, Wallen. Yeah, so Cetra, Escape Artist, plus 20. It's probably still not enough, but it's a shot in the dark. You can always nat 20. Uh, I only have a 10, but we'll see. Alright, so that's plus 30. You can still roll 50 with that, and or nat 20 is basically giving you a 5% chance to get out of there. So, nope. No. Try that. All right, and Yuhi is being attacked. Well, as a... Where is that action? So, um... How many weapons can it do in effect? Alright, as an immediate action, um, she throws her weapons up in the air, and they start uh, dancing around her, and then she reaches two of her arms to pull out two additional long swords, and her other four hands are currently unoccupied. Nifty. Let's 
So she's going to get... So just the first two from this one. So does a 49 hit you at all? Nope. Okay. And I don't imagine a 50 won't hit. And then... Then, um... All of the attacks... In one sec, I actually have to do this real quick. I forgot she has this weird thing. So the first one is actually going to be at minus six for this one. So that's nope. probably none of them going to hit except for... So she got a crit off. Oh, no, wait, that's 19, not a 20. So she got a crit off, so that's 36 points of damage automatically. Not a crit confirm. And... Let's see. And then the off hands go off. So all of these go off. Natural one on that one. So natural one, she's fine, and I think the rest she missed, except does a 55 hit you? Not at the moment. Yeah, so did not succeed on any of those attacks, but she realizes how much power you have, and she'll work on that later. She's going to five foot step, dragging Cetra along back, and that is the end of her turn. Okay. Uh, Jordan will cast freedom of movement on Cetra. So no longer then grapple. Grab a hold of Reed's wand and uh, get ready to move. Okay. Did you want to attempt to UMD it or? Uh, I have no chance. Ah. Also, you're not going to be able to do that this round. Do what? Cast Dimension Door. Oh. Yeah, I thought he. I thought I was just supposed to touch him so I can move with him when he does it. Gotcha. Bosco. Yeah. yeah. The bonus action cannot be used to cast a spell, so you can only cast one spell per round, period. Yep, I made the initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bosco. Bosco is going to five foot step. He is then going to cast uh, Wandering Star Motes on this Southern one. Okay, SR please. I can only feel it on a net one. That's a uh, 42. Okay, that succeeds. DC 28 will save. Let's see, any bonuses that I have? There's always a chance. Okay, so she is going to make a will save at D20 plus 25. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you decided to utilize an illusion spell. Oh, wait, illusion? Oh, she's a completely unaffected by this. Oh, yeah, true, oh. seeing. true seeing it negates 100% of illusion spells. Oh, okay. Um. All right. Uh, he's going to use a move action to gain. Um, star toss shower. Let me just change that. Um, and has a swift action. He's just going to throw a single deadly throw at the south one. Okay. Oh, and let's not forget. 
get about that. And that is Bosco's turn. So you do 72 points of damage. That hurts. Points. Julian, um, he's going to have some trouble trying to hit these guys, especially with the 50% this chance to use things. Um, so he's going to just try. He's going to put Quarry on the south guy. Ooh, natural one. Nope. Does not succeed. I don't even need to roll. Do you have SR, uh, Vasco? <coughs> nope. I think he does well adjacent to me. Oh, do I? Holy Avenger. I'd have whatever that SR is then. Uh, the wielder and anyone adjacent to her. So what's your SR over there with the... Uh... Double checking. I think it's probably Five, like 20. Yep, 20 exactly. Okay. I just don't add one this one. Okay, so targets Bosco with a telekinesis. Plus twelve. Sixteen. Can that affect Bosco? He has freedom of movement though. Just a common maneuver. Depends on the form of the telekinesis, I would expect. It's just a violent thrust of tell it's basically like someone's pushing a wave of uh air against you. Force push. It's not trying to grapple you. What is your CMD over there, Bosco? Uh, 40. So, only able to move you five feet towards the plate barrier. I was hoping to get a little higher, but... Oh, wow, she rolled pretty low and high anyways. <laughs> it didn't work anyways. Didn't think about that. Um, Yuhia, your turn. Either five foot step and go after that one, or go after the other one. Decisions. Help, Cetra. Yeah, yeah. All right, all the re relevant buffs are on, so here we go. No, 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 no. Yeah, I just rolled really low. Goddamn. Eh, I suppose I can spend a... Yeah, I'll spend a point of mythic power to get one more in. That's also a no. Fair enough. Cetra, you're no longer grappled. Oh, okay. Well, I'm definitely going to move back and then shoot. Both of them are going to make AOs. Just the first one. Uh, 
Although, actually, only one of them can make an AO, depending on where she, how she moves. But, um, yeah, she's gonna make a single long sword attack. So, just the first one 56 versus AC for 23 points of damage. And then I'll do my attack, I guess. Okay. Yep, full round it. No, no. Which one are you hitting, by the way? Because it, it banners. That one? Okay. No, no, no. Natural one, I need a d20 roll with that one. That, I think, is a d20. 20, natural 20 roll, yes, so there's six feeds. Not a crit confirm. So, okay. So only the 45 points of damage. Read. Alright, we need to get uh, Jorn into the fight here. So, utilizing the Wand of Dimension Dory takes the three of us in this orientation. Whee. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to grab you, Bosco. I meant to grab uh, this fellow here. And we're going to be out to the corners of Joran here. Well, if you ended up there, you have to end up touching them. Oh you yeah, right. Up after your dimension doors over. Sorry, I was mentally visualizing Jordan as the center of this thing, so we're we're fine where we are. Yeah. And I will cold eye strike as a swift. Oh wait, dimension door. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you get the dimension strike, yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, uh, I know. I keep forgetting about that because I played for this for so long before they did that. <laughs> so that is that is in a turn. She sees that you, he has too hard to hit, and so is going to just actually put stuff over here. And she's going to attack Joran from now, from where she's standing. And so, okay, so her six weapons are currently loosed. She's going to pull out two additional weapons from her back. So, okay. All right, so blah, 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 blah. she's going to try with power attack on this one. So plus two longsword main power attack. And the first one is going to be at minus six. So the... what's your AC over there, Joran? Uh, 40 AC. Okay, so the... 51 minus 6 is at the 45. That's a hit. The 33 is a miss. The third attack is a 44 plus a confirm. So I'm going to put a bleed on there. So I remember that one. Um, so you get that amount. So 31, the 70, and the 32. Then she has four weapons. So only the first four attacks for these long swords. Oh, yeah, that's, no, wait, sorry. This is main power attack. Okay. Shit, I did this wrong. Uh, okay. Okay, so the first one's right. The second one is that's just the main power attack for her main weapon. So the 47 and the 44 is going to hit. 27 is a natural one. 36 just a whiff. And just the first three attacks with this one. Whiff, hit, hit. Yeah, so 
just the second and the third attack on this one. So 21 and 20. And she's going to get Tail Slap. Do you have um, freedom of movement, Jorn? I do not. So she's going to get free grapple. I don't know if that's actually going to beat your CND. Sure it does. Well, your CMD also gets boosted by being slightly bigger. No, on my sheet I only have 27. Ah, enough. All right, it's because your strength dex and your three fourths BAB. Gotcha. Yeah, your, your CMD does not change when you actually grow in size because plus one strength minus one dex. Okay, so do you have any DR of any kind? I do not. Okay, so yeah, because I'm sure their weapons count as evil, so the righteous might won't even come into play. Yep, you know, they count as a lot of things. They have infused blades and shit. 255 points of damage, I think. That sounds about right. Oh wait, did I count? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Nine. Joran. Okay. So that hurt. Uh, I still have five hit points left, thankfully. <laughs> so he's going to use um, Shimmy Out, which is part of Nine Lives. Uh, if I'm grappled or pinned, I automatically escape the grapple as if I succeeded on Escape Artist. Okay. And that is when I'm going to Swift cast uh, heal sounds like a good idea and then I'm going to hit him hit her go for it We are hasted, as I forgot last round. <laughs> Ooh. No, no, no. But like, are you hitting the guy in the north or the south? To the north. That's a whiff, whiff, whiff. And oh wait, the crit is is it a d20? It's a 19, 19, so it's not an auto crit. So no, 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 no. All those are no's. A little extra juice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think that's... Well, I get an extra move, right? Yes. 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 A five foot up there. Five foot? That's a ten foot. Well, it's meant to be a five foot. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, that's fine. But... Okay. Huh. 
Bosco. Okay, well, four of us were going to heal from this, but now only three of us will. Bosco, Cetra, and Yuhia. We each gain 29. Hey. Thank you. And Bosco oh. is going to attack the north, or the south one first, and then I'll bounce to the north one. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, man, I rolled a four, wasn't it? That's the no. Um. Yeah, I can't even really boost that. So that's my standard. Hmm. Doesn't really want to be shoved into this wall. Ah, he's gonna have to risk it. He's gonna run by that one. She's going to make an AO. It's just the primary. I don't know if 49 hits you. Ah, uh, yeah, that is. Okay. So 24 points of damage. And that is all. Okay. This guy's gonna take a five foot step back, being way too close to uh, to a Merilith is not a good idea. And is going to target the south one. Wow, natural 20 on the top one, and that one. So those are two crits, possibly. Not crits, um, so this is Quarry. Actually, I think with the quarry ability, we auto confirms those crits. Does it? Yep, he receives a plus two inside bonus on all attack rolls against his quarry, and all critical threats are automatically confirmed. Okay. So, auto crits. Um, so, I'm going to need to do. Those are the damages that she's going to do, and the cold is going to take four, right? Probably. But hey, still yeah. good damage. Yeah, 26 and 29. Those hurt. Gonna stand still and instead is going to attack Cetra. Oh boy. What's your AC over there, Cetra? Everything hits. I only have a 30. Okay, so except for the third attack. How many hit points you got? 172, so hold on a second. I 
So, am I gets, like dead? That's a lot of damage. Um, what she's gonna do is once you go unconscious at with 189 points of damage, then she stops her attacks and is going to take a five foot step in the middle of her attacks and switch the rest to read. So, 50 does a 49 hit you, Reed? What's your AC over there? 39 currently. I'm going to stone block at least one of those attacks, so plus 4 to that, so 44, or at least one attack. Okay, so the first the, the first attack you get is that second attack crit. So what's your AC after you put that stone shield up? 44. Um, so it's still going to hit you and crit you. But the stone shield's going to absorb, give DR to it. What's the type of DR? It's not a DR, it's a, you break the stone shield first, so it's got hardness and hit points. Oh, uh, okay, makes sense, so only have that time to get through it, makes sense. Alright, uh, so... I, have, I do have um, a fortification effect going on if there's a crit involved. Okay, so what kind of fortification is it? 25, um, 50, Double checking, because this entire campaign, it has not come up yet. <laughs> These guys are high crit monsters. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they, they, they throw out enough crits to where they got a decent chance at it. I believe it's 50%, but I'm double checking that. It just matters if it's minor, moderate, or max. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's moderate. But like I said, I'm double checking mythic, it. Mythic Mage Armor, right? Uh, legendary fortification is uh, then one use legend parry to negate the crit. Oh, from your ring. Yeah. All right. So I can spend a, a mythic point from the ring to negate the crit. Okay. So you spend an MP to negate that one. Yeah. So ring rings pool of of points. Okay, so the so it's only the twenty one points of damage to your stone shield. Then forty eight is going to hit you. Fifty one, the fifty five and forty four is going to crit you on that one. Okay, so total damage, not including the stone shield one. Okay, so not including stone shield. Hundred and nineteen. Okay. Ow. And a free grapple attempt, unless you have freedom. I do not, and that's pretty much guaranteed to succeed, but I'll roll it just in case. Oh, I don't have to. It's no, TV, never roll. mind. Yeah, it just yeah. happens. Oh, the days of opposed grapple checks in 3.5. Man, <laughs> I hated that. I hated that. Oh, it, it was always terrible. I am so glad they improved it in Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. All right, you here, uh, your turn. All righty. Five foot step up here, get some flanking. Hopefully, that's enough Do it. juice to hit this lady with. Hmm, let's see, was I using combat expertise? Yeah, I was, so 60 AC is what I'm looking at. Nope. I need a natural one roll for that second attack, though. Are you going to yep. use an extra? Plus your, uh, yep, what is it? Uh, the haste attack. Oops, I think I think you're flanking with... No, I, I, I got that enabled. 
the it's right uh, there at the bottom. There's a d20 roll. Okay, so, and your haste attack, please. Yep. That's some damage. There we go. Ouch. Cetra. He's currently unconscious. Um, I believe you auto-stabilize. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're just stable. Reed, your turn. Well, once you grapple a wizard, there's only one thing you can do. Basically. Dimension door. Get me out of here. Shulk. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wants to get a better strike on Joran, so it takes a five foot step over here. And is going to attack Joran. I was gonna say since half of him is covered, he might get some cover, but not yeah. sure. So, um, yeah, so you're gonna get plus two AC for partial cover on this one. So, what's your AC over there, Jordan, with plus two cover? Uh, 42. 42 is the magic number we're looking for. Okay, so let's do this right. This time it's the all of these, these are the floating weapons. Hit, miss, and you said 42 is a hit, 37, natural one, that's fine. And the 50 is going to hit, so those were the floating weapons. And then the primary long sword. Um, that crit is going to confirm. So I can, I have fortitude, which I can use an ability, uh, a critical hit or a sneak attack uh, is negated. Yep, okay. nine lives. So not crit, but still damage. Um, and then the offhand, she's currently, she was finally able to get all six weapons out for this, so all of these. And it's a whiff, a hit, a hit, and a hit, and a whiff. Mm-hmm. You got a heal last round, right, Doran? Yeah. Okay, so the bleed's no longer there. All right, so were you able to figure out all the damage, or did you need to just put it all together? Uh, I didn't calculate it back again. Okay, all right, so let me do this. Okay. 18 plus 26 plus 19 plus 32 plus... It's a miss, miss, miss. Miss, hit, 20... Five. 161 points of damage. Joran is down. Currently unconscious. Okay, so Joran's currently unconscious but stable. Bosco. Things aren't looking good on this one. because it's been the end of that, so... You see her AC goes down a little bit. Hey. <laughs> Alright. Bosco is going to use a Mythic Point to gain another standard action. He's going to use that standard action to attack. So we'll start from the north one to the south one. Okay. Come on, that 20s. Ooh, Ask and thou shall receive. Um, 
I am going to immediate action uh, gallon inspiration. Oh no, I don't. I don't. No, I can't. I don't. Can you gallon inspiration a crit confirm? Uh, I need, need to attack roll. Yeah, I'll do. Talent inspiration fails an attack roll. Yeah, you get a plus two d four on so there retroactively. Okay, so that's a plus five because it's inspired up. So that would be a fifty seven on the yes, confirm. that'll hit. So it is a crit. Okay, and that's against the top one, and then this one will be against the bottom one. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna hit. Nope, no. All right, then Bosco is going to move. Um, oh, I'm just gonna have to run like right by here, like that. So you're gonna take AOs the entire way through? Yeah. Okay. Taking two of them. Alright, so just the primary attacks on both of these. Ouch. Okay, so that's what? Uh, 23 and then... 22 and 45. So 90. Indeed. Oh, hey, yeah. It is 90, exactly. <laughs> then he's going to attempt to defensive cast... Can you nat one a concentration check? It is possible. Um, hold up. 29, so that's plenty. And he is going to bards escape everybody. Where are we going? <laughs> All right. Let's throw you yeah, right here. <laughs> so um, you're not going to be able to get everybody, but you're going to be able to get a lot of them. Should be able to get everybody, right? Uh, I think have, it's the distance. It's the distance between each other, so you no person can be more than thirty oh, feet away from each other. Uh, where was? Oh shit! So technically, you can get. Oh, you're not even gonna be able to get the your special guy, but you can get everybody that's on this west side. So basically, I can get half the party. Yeah, Reed, Reed would not be able to be got, get done. Unless you focus it on, like, Joran and Reed. So I think All right, let's good. throw... Okay, Joran is hurting, but there's nothing we can really do about that. So we'll throw Yuya here. Well, Joran's included. Oh, yeah, because he's within 30 feet of all of us. Okay. Mm, he's also unconscious, though. Okay. Nice. Still bards escaping though. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw Joran like back here somewhere in the corner. Yuya up front. Oh, rude. <laughs> um, we'll put Setra also back in the corner, and then put like Bosco like here somewhere. Put enough bodies in front of. Uh, <laughs> Reed and hopefully Reed has a trick up his sleep. <laughs> That's all. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to give it myself. And that ends Bosco's turn. Um, Julian sees you guys go down and is starting to leave. Wait, he went through the door? The door is open. Oh, okay. Dynamic lighting for some reason is being weird. Okay, so he's going... She's going to move up to here. And is going to attack Yuhia. Okay. So only one strike on this one. Just the primary. 49. No. Remember, is not smited, so... Uh, let me turn that buff off briefly, but I think that's still a no. One moment. Okay. Waiting for the sheet to calculate. 
Uh, that is still a no. Okay. Yuhi, uh, your turn. I can. I got one trick. Alright, so I'm gonna move back there, provoking an attack of opportunity as I do. Okay. They will take it, only the primary on both of these. Uh, so let's. Wait, which one's from the smited one? Smited one's on the north. So the okay, first so... one is the smite a guy. Okay, so that one's a miss. Other one is a hit. Uh, do their weapons count as good? They count as... Greater infused weapon. Chaotic, evil, cold iron. So I get a small amount of damage reduction. Alrighty, and once I'm over here... Uh, the sword is going to cast Heal on Joran, so get 150. She's going to use her swift action to use uh, the heal from her stole on Cetra, and then she's going to channel. Nice. So 76. This is probably the most healing that she's ever done or will ever do. Sadly, I cannot exclude bad guys. So everyone's getting 27. Cool. Bosco still looks at as he's now the frontliner. So how much you help him. So how much to Jorn and how much to Cetra? Uh Jorn and Cetra both just got 177 total. There is Mackenzie there. Oh, yep, there it is. I have been doing this. Cetra, you're conscious. You're also prone, but I think Mythic Case lets you, like, stand up quicker or something. Yeah, it lets you stand up as a free action. So you can stand up and fire. Or could I stand up and technically go back more? <laughs> oh, also that, but remember, you can still, like, move and do a full round attack to your fleet warrior. Also, stepping away for a second. Dinner bell got rang. Okay. Do the attacking thing. Okay, 46 is a no, 60 is a yes, 53 is a yes, 60 is a yes, 55 is a yes. So that's one, two, three, four. Wow, that was terrible. 114. I messed that up, right? Oh, that's right. Reed, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm glad that uh, folks are back up and we don't have to completely run. So he is going to use a Mythic channel power as uh, he looks at these two Marilis and attempts to slow them. Okay, SR please. Uh, the channel power negates SR. So SR negated, so they just get a will save at... Let's see, hold on a second, I need to look up. 
Alright, the channel power will add... I'm assuming they're mythic, so the channel power will add 2 to that DC. Okay. So we'll save just transmutation... If for some miracle they're not mythic, then it would be plus 4 to the DC. Right, they, are, they, are, they definitely have mythic. <laughs> I assumed, but you never know. Alright, so they are going... Actually, before I back out of there, I'll follow up on something with her. Okay. So they get a will save, d20. And if any of them make their save, I think I have a mythic option to make them re-roll. But i double check that. So, let's see. It's going to... So that's a 43 and a 45. Reduce point. Double checking. I thought we had something that made folks re roll, but I don't remember. Uh, Force of Will can make a non-mythic person reroll. Ah, okay. Yeah. So massive AC, massive hit points, massive DC. Awesome. So he'll follow up with a basic cold ice strike. It does have SR on it, which is not going to matter. So after that, he moves back. The, uh, they're immune to cold anyways. Oh, well, great. Okay. He's going to need to move up here. And she's going to use... She's going to use her, one of her blade barriers. She should already have two used. She had to use her mythic point in order to actually boost. She got lucky with the saves. Joran. Alright, uh, which one of these is the most damaged? Can we tell? Uh, they both look about the same. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll cast on the one to the west. And... I'm going to cast you for Tranquility. And if that's that beats the SR, which is uh, 29 plus 9, then there's no save. And she's just going to enjoy existing and not want to attack or cast spells. I have to go down that rabbit hole in order to find what that does. She is tripping all sorts of balls right now. Okay. Um... That is an enchantment compulsion, so yeah. Um... Okay, so all right. So unholy aura says go to protection from good in order to look at that, and then you go to protection from evil, and protection from evil says enchantment compulsions do not work, while protection from evil slash good is online. Hmm. So. And since unholy aura is constant, it never even if I I'm not good. Because I have the um, beyond morality. Um, this doesn't have that. That um, like it's the deflection bonuses and resistance bonuses don't 
apply to you. So actually, the uh, their AC is actually two less against you. I forgot about that. Um, I'm not used to having that, I guess. Um, so, but the enchantment compulsions do not apply to just specific. Wait, second effect only functions in spells created by wolf creatures. So yeah, it would still work. Okay. Nice. Got that last. It's always that last thing. It's like, oh yeah. yeah. <sighs> Best advice I ever got told by an older player: always read the full descriptions. Here's four paragraphs. The last sentence is what you want, though. Yep. Okay, and then uh, what we'll do is, with a swift action, we're going to do a blade barrier right in front of them. So we're 24, so she's just going to look, look silly. Okay. And does not have a surge, so cannot even surge it. So Bosco. Um, Bosco is just going to make a quick spellcraft check to know if attacking someone under this would break it. I think it just gives them another save. Okay. So Bosco's going to five foot step back, and he's going to use um, Desna's shooting star on the other one. Ah, yeah. If you attack them and they make their save, they get to act normally for a round. Okay, so two. So that's one and two. So you're attacking the one on the east? Yeah, the the one that's not affected by the you. First attack is a hit. And the one is not. Um... No, I already used an immediate action, so I don't have my swift action. Yep, that's it. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's a full round. My five foot step, so I can't move. Yep, that's my turn. Leon runs away. Uh, let's see. So she can move normally. Shorin is going to get a plus two partial cover bonus against the one attack that she's going to be able to make this round. <laughs> Doesn't really help when they crit. Um, Swift action, no crit. Or immediate action, no crit. Fine. Alright, so just do 23 points of damage. You here. It's Blade Fairy and and it looks like a Meryl has just stabbed Jordan. Well, that's not very nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to actually use this for the first time. Uh, going to activate her Divine Bond on her offhand. And I have just enough bonus for it to give it brilliant energy. So basically, her offhand is now a lightsaber. Jordan's going to call out, do not hit the one that's standing idle. And she will use her increased speed to move there, provoking an attack, getting a little cover from Jorn as she moves. Okay. Negative. Okay. Then I'll use a pointy mythic power to get one attack in with the uh, now brilliant energized weapon. Sounds good. So no armor. So I have to check and see what kind of armor class she has. Yep, so let's see. Uh, so all of it's natural, so no AC change. Oh, fair enough. What's 23 natural? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, I know. These are a little over the top. Alright, so add two to this since I 
don't have a single attack for the offhand. So just the first one and add two to the attack roll. So that's a no, unless you want to surge it. Uh, does the beyond morality thing come into effect here as well? Would that help? Mm, yes, that is true. Deflection bonuses will be minus four. So AC is 49 versus you. Hey, look at that. Hey, just enough. Cool. And that's me. Cetra. So the one that's down here don't hit? Correct. It's just kind of standing there smiling at everyone. Not creepy at all. <laughs> that is a 50% of the hit. 44 is a whiff. 44 is a whiff. 49 is a 50 times hit. 42 is a whiff. Do you want any extra attack? Oh, you got. You did that. So. Oh, you uh, did that next to Oh, that's right. She wasn't hasted. I was about to say. Never mind. Any extra attacks you want to do? Um, what is that mythic thing again? Do Amazing you initiative. Okay. Amazing initiative. One mythic point for a single standard shot. Although yours took it down, actually. Ah, huzzah! Not needed. Okay. okay. Reed, what are you doing? Uh, I don't even fucking know. Um, so the if you act hostilely to this one, or just if you hurt it? It gets, it gets an Hostage. SR, or it gets a uh, will save. Will save? And it just acts normally for one round? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, see. Yep, if it is attacked. Mm. Yep, it's a will saving throw. If the saving throw succeeds, the creature can act normally for one round. Alright. Um... Sorry, indecisive. Um... Okay. We are going to attempt... Uh, to daze her. So we're gonna come over this way for a clean shot. And applying uh, the dazing metamagic to a disintegrate touch attack. Okay. Boom. Are you negating SR? Yes. Okay. Alright, so mythic disintegrate with uh, channel power and the Dazing metamagic applied to it. So it's not double damage, just 50% damage. Okay, so it gets a fortitude save. Yes. First, you gotta get a touch attack. So range touch. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, gonna boost that. that. Yeah. With 21 touch. Do you have any more bonuses? Oh, uh, come Bosco, on. Bosco will uh, immediately uh, and uh, Gallon Inspiration. Uh, here's one thing. He's also not good. Yeah, I'm, neut I'm <sighs> neutral if that matters. Okay. Um, let's see. Does Are you applying Inspire on Courage on that? I am. Okay, so that that would only be a plus one that I just gave you. Actually, that's all you needed in order to make it hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I was like, oh man. Thank fucking god. Doing something useful for once. <laughs> Alright, so that is effectively empowered. Um, so what's the DC? So the DC is 39 plus 2 because it's uh, she's a mythic creature. So 41. A no. So she failed. Yay. So I did not augment it. Technically, I'm gonna. I'm being honest with that, so it doesn't just disappear. Um, 
but it is going to be dazed for six rounds. Okay. Also so not feeling too good there, Mr. After Stark. after taking 184 times 1.5, after taking 276 damage, if it's still up. It is disintegrated. Plus, it also did take a little con damage there, my guy. <laughs> I I hate having to pull that out all the time, but like that's the only thing that works. <laughs> when the nuclear option is called for. All right. So now we get like, I'd say a, like, didn't one of them have like twelve weapons out or something? They Six both of them have. Floating. They both have um, 12 large plus 2 longswords, so it's 24 plus 2 large longswords. I found the money sink. If ever that song was warranted. Yeah. <laughs> also, that means that Jorn and Cetra both get that medal for getting down by a demon and joining, that, joining the fight. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to go through the um, functionality of like waiting until afterwards so you guys can just get this. Where is the metal? Uh, Righteous Medal of Vigor, because I also have it pending from that last fight. Well, last, last fight. So both, so whoever got below zero in uh, now has a righteous metal figure. I'm not even gonna like worry about the the little ceremony. So you guys could just gain it right now, because otherwise I'll forget about it. <laughs> We're gonna need it. Yeah, it's um, gonna be moving. Really um i hesitate to be that guy but are we leveling throughout any of this given the difficulty of these fights yeah, yeah you'll be leveling at after this next fight so after the next fight okay yeah you're very close with this one and then this next fight you're gonna be leveling to 16 depending on what you do but yeah that was like the worst that was like the perfect storm of like the impossible enemy. <laughs> high AC, awesome. many attacks, high DCs. <laughs> like how the fuck he's supposed to do? <laughs> and a lot of times your your paladin rolled below a ten. Yeah. You guys rolled low and I was rolling a lot. That was all yeah. <laughs> it was. It wasn't that you needed to roll high, you just needed to roll because they had enough. I don't know how I could run a Mythic Merilith in real life because it's just like, oh, well, uh, these no. D20s have these bonuses, these two. <laughs> yeah, it's just like there are certain things where you almost need like some shortcuts like this. Yeah. All right, so uh, you guys can heal up. Let's take a 10, 15 minute break, and that'll also give me time to switch over to the next map, and you guys can heal up So. Uh, Shadup was warning against the dangers of reusing syringes. Okay. Tori? Tori was reluctantly offering a condom for a water balloon. Okay. Tori has a condom that can be turned into a water balloon. <laughs> they really don't work that way. That's hey, all you what the hell? What are you talking about? They totally work that way. They don't burst like that. They're yeah. supposed to be durable. <laughs> No, 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 no. When you fill a condom, it's a water bottle. When you fill it and it has enough pressure, hold on, hold on, it breaks. Right. How, water, how water do you bottle. think condoms think... break when people come if they don't have the tip pinched? That's fair. I'll just use a strength check to chuck it at them. There you go. No, that's literally how it works. If you fill them with water um, to a point where they don't have a ton of extra, like when you actually fill it with water, which you can do by closing it uh, closer to the tip by forcing all the water in there because it's stretched out there instead. 
You can totally use a condom as a water balloon. And I can verify this because I've had condom water balloon fights. They hurt a lot more than regular balloons. Yeah, I believe that. They don't break, do they? Oh, not they every break. Time. I don't think I've ever seen one not break as long as people are actually trying to throw it and not being a pussy about it. Really? Because I've seen water balloons not break on people and it hits them like a fucking rock. No, 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 but that's what I'm saying. As long as you're not throwing it like a pansy, they break about as well as normal balloons do. Fair enough. We're making a saltwater condom. Okay. That um. is my turn. Would it be at all possible for me to, like, straight up pencil dive through there over top of Taruk, or would I get stuck halfway? You can squeeze through. In That's move. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna straight up dive over top, like, just run and jump over Taruk and jump down. That's, that's wonderful. Isn't that amazing? No that warning amazing. at all. She just goes, Hua! and dives into a fucking hole that's half as big as she is. All right. So let me describe uh, this. Oh, as right. You that part. Dive into it. This is either going to be awesome or horrifying. Or both. So as soon as you dive in, you realize that the walls here um, are just lined with skeletons and corpses. There's hundreds of tiny little bones and arms that point into the room. Their hundreds of outstretched fingers spring these beams of necromantic fury. All of these, these hands just fire straight into you as you're mid, um, mid fall into the room. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thanks. We need a will save. Alright, so you only take half of this damage. As they're and it, it actually follows you. You see all these hundreds of little bony arms and uh, skeletal hands point at you as you're falling and they just follow your body down and keep firing these beams of necromantic energy into you. Yeah, a lot like that. Uh, but you do land on the ground now. Uh, since you did the dive, do you need to uh, to make a, an acrobatics roll to see if you can uh, land without being prone? Oh yeah, you do easily. <laughs> yeah, you look badass as you uh, kind of get your footing, raise your uh, your weapon, and uh, much to the surprise of the lich, um, you make your swing. See. Um, you guys hear this like very husky voice billowing up. Guys, bad down here. Um, your attack does connect, but we do need to see if uh, the displacement lets it pass through. <laughs> yeah, you beat me to it. It does. It goes right through. Yeah. Got okay. Through yeah, you you have done uh, done a great deal of I damage. I may to die this down thing. here, but I went out a total fucking badass. <laughs> so did you like drop in on him, like fucking Link, with your sword straight out underneath you? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> It's like one of those cool little like rolly moves at the bottom, exactly like Link, you know. Oh shit! Like, I think, took you. think the 3DS version of Ocarina of Time. I like it. It's good like shit. It. Yeah. Karen. Taren leans over the the lich, grabs its bony wrists and places them over its head, and then 
unclips a feather from his cloak and standing up he invokes the power of a feather token anchor on the lich's head. <laughs> That's terrible. A anchor large enough to hold st- is still a very large ship appears in midair and just buries the lich's head, arms, and shoulders. Don't think he's <laughs> casting after that. Okay. Uh, Doesn't make a difference. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. The rider <laughs> lowers his hand. For a moment, everything goes quiet. The darkness keeps swarming in. And he says, Fool, then here you shall perish. Before the darkness has suddenly burst through the light as it's completely engulfed in flame, the rest of you are just witnessing as Baldrick's body is just charred and burnt alive. And um, from on top of his horse, Han suddenly bursts into flame as well. <gasps> and so, completely swathed in flame, Baldrick, your mind is gone. And in its place is something darker and more sinister. As you atop your flaming horse, turn to the rest of your comrades. But not with allegiance. Um, let's see. Vroon, you know, seeing him looking around, you know, with an empty gaze, Froon is going to to sidestep him here, flying off the ground so he's not leaving any sounds or anything. And just kind of get out of the way. And uh, yell at Nirgum. His flank is open! Finish him. Damn it. You see his flank open. Look what you do. They're gonna ball five foot. <laughs> Grab that club and throw it again. <laughs> as, as, it flies, as the club flies through the air and strikes him in his open flank. <laughs> Does a 23 confirm? Yes. Yes! <laughs> I don't think there are hill giant proctologists yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't hit it. You do not. Salmon. Salmon looks down at his buried friends, drops his staff, drops the rope, ducks his head in as you see his form warp and change and shape into the form of a dire corgi. <laughs> oh, I'll allow it. No, no, that's actually, that is actually a creature. <laughs> I'll allow it. This is actually totally is valid. <laughs> I love it. A, a dire... A dire corgi. What? It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it is. I'm looking at <laughs> it right crap. now. That is... <laughs> Unexpected. I like it. Sand coffin. Alright. And uh, that's um, that's a standard action for me. Um, whatever actions I have left, I am going to start you know pawing at the sand, digging like no dog has ever dug before. Okay. Alright, this creature is going to... Um... It's going to reach. Faith. Bob, attack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. So, technically, that would be a charge when you're falling from above. Yeah, I'll allow it. It's oh fine. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bob, in a fit of suicidal rage, just 
dives into the pit head first. That should be a plus two. So for I don't the know what to roll in that. So it's plus two yeah, on the charge. Just, yeah, it's just charge plus two. Uh, it hits. <laughs> now there's the Wait, question. Hold on. Now there's the, the question take... of falling damage. Yeah, doesn't the thing take falling damage equal to an object of its of the rhinoceros' it's... size? Uh, it's the difference between like an object versus a character. The rules, as written, are assigned to like normal, medium-sized characters falling, and it technically is a charge attack. Hmm. There isn't anything about falling damage for characters like that, so we can play it out however you want. How much does a rhino weigh? I just I, in my. Uh... I I'm just I'm just going to say this before the ship my turn. Rule it how you want it to be ruled. Do you want it to be falling damage? Do you want it to be damage per weight? <laughs> um, I feel like the damage per weight... Uh, let me ask you this, though. Are you going to call this a bludgeoning attack if it's damage by weight, or is this environmental He's damage? going in face first. This is piercing. True. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm giving it piercing. Okay, I would, I would think... say go by a white rhino's weight. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Well, I don't know if that's the wisest idea because if this ship mine decides to crawl out of here and throw the rhino back at us, we might be <laughs> running into issues, my friend. I don't think your rhino is going to so one-shot this I, thing and make I, it so I, we're unable. I also don't think the rhino is going to survive this because it takes just right. as much damage as it deals. Oh yeah, okay, that's yeah, true. This is a one-way trip. Fair yeah. enough. So the rhino takes up. and deals 75 damage. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, Bob, you're a fucking legend. Oh. <laughs> so, a after probably like an hour of this, of, you know, berailing the, the patrons with s mostly accurate uh, tales of his most recent adventures and the masses massive battle and how he fought this this strange, you know, the ancient hero to a standstill and matched his skills thrust for thrust. Emphasizing thrust for thrust. <laughs> and with the sword nagging him and nagging him and nagging him, he'll, he'll step away for a second, you know, making his excuses to, you know, head to the water closet or, or whatever the outhouse is, equivalent is in this era. <laughs> and he pulls the sword out a little bit. And I said, now, now, now you listen here. Now we, we need to come to an understanding here. Now it's all fine and dandy to be heroic and do great deeds and, and win the day. But a man has got to relax. And relax you can with a few beers and... Definitely with no googly-eyed floozies. Oh, if you have I... time for that, you have time for me. You could swing me around. I, I, are you jealous? <laughs> of the very idea. I think you are. So I'm spending some attention with the pretty ladies over there instead of wielding you. I'm simply thinking about the best course of action from here and that does not involve fooling around with women. Yeah, well... That's... Aldarian tried that a few times and I quickly taught him out of that. Well, if you take it from me as something of an expert, I imagine that they might enjoy my weapon a little more than yours. I mean... Try as you might, we can see about that. Now, this is just the way I am, and this ain't gonna change, so you best get used to the idea. And I'm saying that poor habits do not maketh man. You and I have a much different opinion of poor habits. How long you been traveling around the realms? Time has changed, my friend. Times may have changed, but true swordsmanship has not. We ain't talking about swordsmanship here. We're talking about handling my weapon. 
and I'm saying you don't have to handle your weapon this way. Rigorous training, dedication, practice, that's all you need. But that's exactly what I'm trying to get with the ladies. And I'm telling you, you don't need to focus your attention there if you wish to be truly great. Think of it this way. And she'll just kind of, she'll pause for a moment. You kind of hear this like, all right, so. So you guys, guys finally, like, I'll back. Okay, so you guys finally um, get out of the plane of bones and fighting a bunch of demons, Terry Demon Dance, Nightwing, the Nightwalker. Um, and then you enter into the ivory maze, the primary maze, in order to get through to the other side. And you go through and you kill some Ulcrest and Terry Demon Dance. There's a maze shift where the entire maze kind of shifts around, um, so that's kind of annoying. And um, and then you fight some Cyclopses, some Ulcrests through the Ivory Maze, and you finally get to the other end of the Ivory Maze. And you enter the Sucking Mire. I, uh... Sucking Mires, vile swarms, demonic flies, brocks, hezrus, beach crocodiles, and all manner of other swamp dwelling creatures that fill the Sucking Mire make it one of the least pleasant of the maze realm. Consists of winding mass of swampy paths connecting with muddy hillocks, all separated by swaths of still dark water. Most of these pools are effectively bottomless, but some turn into endless morasses of cold mud after 30 or 40 feet. It's densely forest with mangrove trees and the like, and the thickly overhanging branches form a solid canopy 20 to 30 feet above. Um, the, uh, so you guys spend one two three four five six days seven seven days in the sucking mire um before i want you guys to make a perception check So everybody can hear this. It sounds like a very large uh, thing, like a building is walking around in the mud above, uh, just just past where you guys are going. Um, so what do you all want to do? It's about like 200 feet away, I think. After the last fight, Jordan's going invisible. So we'll give everybody a second perception check to see exactly what you want to see. Is the terrain here like actual swamp swamp? Yeah. All right. So, so I think everyone would be uh, on our phantom chariot, just hovering just above the ground, so we don't have to muck through that mess. In other words, everyone would be pretty clumped. So perception checks. Yeah, so plenty of time permits. You guys aren't really rushed to do anything.
So that's minutes per level. Okay, so yeah, I'll cast uh, Angelic Aspect Greater upon myself as well. He's a biggin. This thing is 60 feet tall. Thanatonic. No, thanatotic? Thanatotic. Like Thanatos. The... Thanatotic. It's only the one end. Yeah, true. Thanatotic type. Huh. I've not encountered these before. What do we know about them? Uh, let's see. Give me a knowledge planer, please. Planes. Let's see. They have... They are 30 feet wide, 30 feet reach. Um, they can throw up to 100 feet away. Um, a rock. Um, they have an only bed lax. Um, they have damage reduction versus epic and lawful. Um, creatures that get damaged by, um, this creature will need to make a save or be able to, be able to cast divine spells. They have SR. And, let's see, based off of what? So 52 and 53, yep, that's as far as you got. Um, vital Strike, Critical Focus, um, and they have Trample, obviously. Immunity. Immunity is immunity to aging, immunity to death effects, immunity to disease. Well, they're immune to one of the, uh, the nuclear options. Poison or grapple on that list? They are not immune to grapple. They are not immune to poison, it looks like. Hmm. They are immune to compulsions. Although I would imagine this thing has a crazy forte. Generally. Dude's chunkier than chicken. No, sorry, dude's chunkier than potato soup. What so are you how, all going to do? So how shall we ride forth into battle, shiny and chrome? Like Don Quixote in a windmill. I want you guys to guess the touch on this creature. It's probably like negative five or five. something. Five. Uh, oh, wow. I'm going to go with three. And <laughs> ding, 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 three is the number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Basically, you hit the broadside of a barn. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you hit the broadside of a barn. Yeah. Actually, given how big he is, he's probably bigger than a barn. He's a, basically a six-story building, walking around. Dude has his own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, shall we disembark from the uh, our, our mighty chariot? I think uh, if you stay on it, I can get us as a group closer to it before you run in. I can roll with that. Bum bum. Hey. Bum 
possible. And you do all, you do all have the augmented version of haste, so it's the uh, plus seventy to your movement. I think it was. Oh, plus Jesus, plus my plus feet right now. Plus seventy, and you can run over liquid as if it was solid. So all the the ponds, rivers, muck, you can just dash across it like a one of those lizards running <laughs> running yeah. over water. Naruto run over it. Uh, let's see, what does that bring my fly speed to? Oh, where is it? Oh god, I have a 130 fly with a good maneuverability. Alright, so I say we uh, go forth into battle. Okay, so what is your plan? And then I'll just figure out where you're going to be before combat starts. Boss was just going to say. How far are you guys going in? I'm going all the way in. Okay, I'll go half that. <laughs> Stay back at Bosco. I'll go in. Alright, so... You guys are all on the chariot. Are you just going to drive the chariot right up to him? Um, what did you say its its reach was? 30 feet. Yeah, so I'll say we'll we'll drop people off like around here. Okay, so let me take a look at this perception check. Basically give us this uh, tree for some kind of partial cover. Partial cover from that tree? What? I mean, trees on, on the ground, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a caster, for an archer, like that's better than nothing. For a gnome, it's plenty. Exactly. <laughs> I'll take anything I can get. If I get close enough to get swung at, I already fucked up. I'm more surprised that that thing, even if it has, you know, a touch AC of three, I'm more surprised that it has a positive initiative modifier. <laughs> it's got dex. It's just it doesn't have a lot of dex. The the size penalties to AC are, are laughable. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not like an ooze where it's just it, it doesn't even understand what dex is. That's true, you didn't select your token when you actually clicked it. Try again. I'll do Sorry, this. what? Oh no, he's talking to Cetra. Ah. Just put it manually. Oh, that's right. Jordan has a initiative modifier of zero normally. Bosco, you're currently on the chariot with Reed and company. And it has pulled out its gigantic unholy battle axe that is basically the size of a freaking redwood. Is at least uh, <laughs> at least ten Bosco's long. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Bosco pats uh, whoever's closest on the side and she's like, all right, I get off here. <laughs> he's going <laughs> to hop over onto the tree trunk here. Uh, he's going to use a mythic point for that extra action just to get over here. Then he's going to cast um, Shadow Bard to give soothing performance and then a swift action for Inspired Courage, and that's his turn. Okay. Uh, Yukia. Uh, I feel sad that I can't give you this because you moved away, but uh, free action, two uses of smite to give uh, everyone a free one, which she will, of course, take her own. Mm 
Now I wait as my my sheet freaks out. Up, oh, it stopped freaking out. Oh, yeah, now it's stopped freaking out. Okay, so now with her rather, uh, let's go with amazing uh, move speed because of that haste. She's going to get up into this thing's face like a bat out of hell. It's going to smack you. I would not have expected a creature that big to have combat reflexes. It's got a 30 feet reach. It hasn't acted yet. Yeah, combat reflexes is... It's going to pick that just because it's like, I can hit you if you walk close to me. Fair enough. Come on, Thana. I need to get you a token. There we go. Alright, so Battle Axe. Yep, that'll hit alright. 66. Uh, what is his stuff counted as? It is evil, unholy. It'll bypass anything that is alignment based, and, and it counts as animantine as well. Okay, so no DR good. Dang. Uh, since I can count as evil, would I still take the unholy damage? Yeah, it's just an energy tip. So much type, yeah. Oh, okay. Right, and we'll save incoming. No, it has to be of good alignment, so you don't take the unholy damage. It has, since it requires a good alignment in order for you to get it. Oh, nice. Okay. But I think I still owe you a will save. Yes, please. Is my save. Yeah, you're fine. Alright, we'll go with the offhand since it's got the brilliant energy on it. So this is at minus one to hit in damage since, like I said, I don't have the. Actually, you know what? I'll just roll the regular one and add plus two to the hit. So I wouldn't be taking the offhand penalty. Okay, so that is a 49 to hit. That is a hit. Mm -hmm. So that'd be 88 damage. That hurts. Anything else? Ah. Uh, I suppose I'll go Maze Initiative to hopefully do it again. Again at plus two. 59 will hit. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> Reed, your turn. All right, we'll try something I don't often do. So I move up to this river piece here, and I take aim at the at the moving uh, barn across the way, and I cast a empowered, maximized, panel powered, raven feeblement. Remember that you also have a smite buff being offered to you. You can accept it as a swift. Excellent. So you can? Do you actually have range for this? Yeah, it's it's short range, but at this level, it's like sixty-five feet. Okay. So you point out your your finger and you go raven feeble it, and it hits him. It hits just about a foot away from him, and then you see it take a hundred and eighty degrees and come right back at you. Oh yay! Spell spell reflections. Awesome. So you get to hit yourself. Oh, this could. The good thing that Reed has some strength, guys, because this is about to royally suck. Remember, I think you. It's have good thing a... this wasn't a disintegrate. And you also so... have mirror images. Uh, that's true. Thank you for that reminder. You're welcome. Um, you also have to roll to hit okay. Yourself. Okay. So the mirror images would have taken care of that anyway. 
right, let me roll all this stuff together just to get the numbers out there. So yeah, you... Alright, the DC would be uh, two higher because that guy is mythic and I'm mythic. So that would be DC 28. So I save and the range touch 24 would have missed me anyway. So it just hits, the, hits one of your mirror images. Um, hold on. So I say, did it hit by more than five? Yeah, uh, my touch is only 22, actually. So it would have hit me, but the mirror image caught it. Yes. Oh, nice. Which is good, because that would have done uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 22 strength damage if it hit. Oh, Be careful with targeted spells. It's deflecting them. Um, that will suffice for my turn. Okay. Actually, I'm going to use the extra move action just to get behind something physical. And break line of sight if I can. All right. Cetra, your turn. You have a smite being offered to you. Okay, we don't have heroes and then stuff, correct? We do. We have Mythic mm -hmm. Heroism and uh, Inspire Courage is up. And like I said, you are also being offered a smite. So you can accept that as a swift action. What would be the effective spell level after uh, all those bonuses that you granted it? The effective spell level would have been a third level spell. Okay. Alright, so I need that number. That reminds me, what happens if you do throw a spell at something with spell turning, but it ha but you're throwing more spell levels at it than it has left? There's Par actually partial a effect. Yeah, partial effects on both people. Okay. Yeah, there's a whole paragraph on how all that works. Gotcha. There's also a paragraph on if it, uh, both players have spell turning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird because it just bounces back and forth until it gets to the point where it has partial effect and it, it gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> Bosco, damn it. Alright, so 63 is definitely going to hit. Uh, so that means all of them are 52 is going to hit as well. So yeah, lots of damage. Double damage on that first arrow. Um, yeah, I have smite on there as a bonus, but I don't know if that worked. It, it's hard to program in the double damage because it only applies on the very first damage roll that you do for the smite. That hurts significantly. I think she just broke the record. Again. What was the record before? I can't remember. I think Reed had Reed had broken at some point, but I'm pretty sure you just blew through it. So it's swift cast heal. A uh, smart move. And let's see. Um, no, yeah, like, he'll, um, he'll go with a full Unholy Battle Axe right on the, right sitting down and what's in front of him. Yep, here comes the pain. Actually, none of those hit. Goddamn. Yeah, he rolled pretty low, and he did a swift and everything like that, so... Oh, 
make sure that all of those are on there right there. Wait. What's your AC? At the moment fully buffed up, it is a 58. Yeah, so that's not gonna help. That wasn't the right number, but that should be fine. Cool. Joran. Alright, with haste, I'm gonna get it over here. Should still be in range. And looking to the back, going to uh, cast Earthquake. Earthquake? There's a spell I've never seen actually cast before. I think I've only seen it in like RP situations where like you want to take down a city's fortifications. <laughs> Please, Jordan, what's this do again? 80 foot radius spread. To be fair, I think it's probably pretty hard to localize an earthquake. <laughs> so I'm going to do it in the open. Uh, outside of us, but I think we're all flying. I think he is standing, right? He is actually standing on air. Oh, in, okay, in le unless you're providing your own flight effects, nothing is being provided by Reed on that regard. I am flying, though. Yeah, I'm flying, too. But, yeah, if he was hovering above air, then he would cast that. Yeah, he's standing on air. Uh, in that case, uh, he's just going to fly right up to him, then. Uh, he is invisible if he doesn't have C invisibility. And I'm, but I got think you also. Super. Yeah, you super got the super invisibility. Yeah. So then he'll use the uh, swift for the. Dimensional blade. That? Oh, I don't have the um, smite. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can have the uh, the smite if you wish. Yeah, the only person that was not offered to was Bosco, because he went out of my range. Okay, anything else? Uh, do you need to know the bonuses for that, by the way? Uh, yeah, we'll just add it to this. That is... is that a, uh... The first crit on that one. Uh, let's see. So you hit and you crit. He has plus seven to attack, and I think it's nineteen to damage. Is is the actual thing in here? The amount of damage? I don't no. think he has my damage. I, I don't so. have the amount of damage in there. Plus, he's gonna foe bite that one too. Woo! Okay. So, before the foe biting, add 57 to the total for the smite damage with the crit. Let's confirm critical hit, spend 2 to double the total damage, and the precision base damage is doubled. So, that would make it times 3 instead of times 2. Because multiplication is commutative. Three hundred eighty-eight points of damage. Nice. Bosco. Huh. Hmm. 
That's a very good question. All right, move action. Bosco will. Um, is this difficult terrain? No, unless there's a water tile or a rock tile, it's not difficult. All right, so I can move 20 feet. Then he's going to use a mythic point to move another potential 20 feet. Uh, before you do that, we do have the mythic haste, so you do have an extra move action. And you're absolutely... Oh, we have haste? Oh, okay, I didn't see that being cast. Okay, so I'll just move to there with one move action. Uh, the other move action, he'll gain star toss shower. And... He's just going to throw... Hmm. Yeah, you'll just throw one attack at the creature. Um, put all that on. Don't eventually roll. Oh, man, that's a net one. That's a net one. Um, that is all. You here. Alrighty. Five foot fly up closer. And, uh, let's go. Uh, no armor bonus on the offhand since it is brilliant energy. Okay. already used that natural one. Immune to staggered. So it hit hit. That is not a crit confirm. Hit crit confirm. Hit hit. Yeah, that's a plenty of things, but still immune to staggered. Ah oh, boo. Oh well. You're you're basically hitting him with a pretty large toothpick versus like his knee. I'm going for I'm going for the veins in his leg. Reed, your nice. turn. Alright. Um, Reed is trying to burn through his spell turning. So he's casting a level 7 heightened magic missile. Okay. So. Let's see. Uh, what is the effect of spell level? Level 7. Level 7. Which for me. You're going to get. I do have shield up, so it won't do anything to me regardless. Yeah, uh, and then... I'm more curious so if any of those... Get... He's only gonna get 57% of the damage. Okay. Mission accomplished. Spell turning is burned through. So, to make life easier, let's just say the first uh, two damage and be done with it. Since okay, it's such how much damage is it? Six. Just because it's so low numbers, it doesn't really matter. All right, Cetra, your turn. You see what looks to be some kind of stone force field uh, up here around him as you do that. But Cetra, it's your turn. Is this wall preventing me from seeing him at all? Nope, you can still see him. It's just really odd that it's up. He's starting to glow. 
I'm gonna shoot at him, I guess. <laughs> So we're looking at that number. So hit, 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 miss. Hit is a crit. Okay, cool. You got to that point. So as a swift action, he gains eight spell levels of spell turning. Fifty. And he... Let's see, what's the distance that he needs to take in order to do that? Just enough. That don't sound good. <laughs> that moment when the ranger is given a full open field and it's still not enough. <laughs> Trample. So I said, did he land on top of her? Yep. Oh god, it's a fucking juggernaut. It's as far as he can go, and he will deal. So you get two choices. You get a choice between one or the other. Either you can get an attack of opportunity as he's moving past, but you take full damage and you end up prone. Or you can try to take the reflex save, which means I you have take half damage and end up no. Well, it's either you get the attack or you get the reflex save. You can't get both. With the reflex save, I'd get no damage, though, with my evasion, correct? Mm -hmm. If you make the reflex save. Yeah, he, he is also taking that. Yeah, I'll do the reflex. You here made the Jesus. reflex save and only takes half. Bosco took the reflex save and took half. Cetra took the reflex save and took half. What is Jorn doing? Yeah. <laughs> Jorn, Jorn takes, takes full damage. damage. So Cetra takes no damage. Um, Jorn takes full I, damage. Yeah. Bosco takes half. I think, I think anyone who made that save takes no damage with the mythic uh, saves. Nope, 50% because he is counted as mythic. Ah. This is a mythic considered effect, which means it's either full or yeah. half. Um, yep. The only reason that Cetra would take none is because it has evasion. And yeah. everybody yeah. needs to, that got hit minus Cetra, so needs to make a will save. Uh, Jordan, you might want to reroll that. Meanwhile, Reed is sitting here hiding behind the rock, just watching us. Is like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> he looks down dubiously at his cover. It's like that. This 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 cover is helping. <laughs> Jorin. Uh, how much damage did he take? Forty-two. Forty-two or twenty-one if you made it, which. DC was 44. So actually, Yuhia didn't make it. For the will save? Oh, that's a will save. Um, will save is a lot lower. It's only at 32. I was about to say, I rolled a 55 on the reflex. Yeah, I was looking at the, the wrong save. With haste, I should be able to fly there. I have a uh, 50 speed yep. without it. Yep. You do do. 70, so yep. Uh, 
Uh, go ahead and strike once. That is actually a whiff. Uh, it is two more since I'm charging, right? Okay. If yeah, that, that helps it. at all. And also it's flat-footed, which just doesn't really help. It's only minus one. But yeah, you hit. Sweet. That's... Did I move oh, from un underneath him? If I did the reflex over, do I stay where I am? Exactly where you are. You just don't all prone. Oh, yeah, we're getting everybody in this. Reflex save for everybody. Including me in the backfield over here? Yep, you're within 100 feet. Thirteen nines across the board for Reed. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it even. Gotta keep it yeah. Okay. Uh, Perfectly balanced. One person. I know I have one, two, three, four, five. I gotta say five saves. Okay. Joran didn't make the reflex save, but everybody else did. So 72 or 36 points of damage. And he's dead. And now you have to unbury Cetra. <laughs> I was about to say, did he do a, a suicide bomb or a Baylor explosion? This was a uh, basically akin to a Baylor explosion. Ah, gotcha. Definitely went out with a bang. Yummy. I ate all of those up. And then you have Cetra being like, I am stuck underneath the horn of his helmet. Shit. Uh, Joran. You're, you're... Uh, crap. Wait, you're actually not that strong. Damn it! Although she could probably try getting herself out. She has a really high strength, so... If all else know. failed, Osco can bar to escape you out. Out of curiosity, what is the hit dice on this guy? Uh, 23. Okay. Mm. Also, out of curiosity, what CR was that thing? Three. Oh. Well, damn. That was an epic level opponent. I was actually kind of wondering, uh, like, I didn't think that it didn't have really a lot of immunities as the other previous one did, because it didn't really have a lot of AC to it. So... Yeah. You guys trounced it. I didn't expect you guys to trounce it as much. I have found that we are excellent at single target encounters. Not so excellent against multiple target encounters. Yeah. Also, for those big epic fights, I tend to not use things like Chains of Light and just... Oh yeah, the encounter's over, guys. <laughs> So congratulations, everyone. I think according to the lore, we just killed one of the first children of the gods. Um, so you guys level, and next game um, we will be proceeding into the mountains. In the mountains. For pure curiosity's sake, would this have worked? What? It would have come back at you. Oh. So that doesn't mean would it work or not. Like, you'd have to roll. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, that one is, that is targeted. That's for you. <laughs> That's Let's a good one. it works on Reed. So against Reed, he'd be sitting this combat out. <laughs> so, yes, it would work. It, it, it's one of the first times that I've seen a creature with constant spell turning. Yeah, that's, that's nifty. It that, refreshes spell turning as a swift action. That really threw me off because I thought I was being clever with like, oh, magic missile. Let's just burn through what it's got. 
and then I'll hit it with something interesting. The the next thing I was gonna try to do was to actually get that warp of metal to actually work for once. Because <laughs> if that had worked, um, its main weapon would be like negative four on its attacks, and with RACs that might have just been enough to drug everything off. But anyway. I don't know, Dude was able to go pretty damn high on his rolls. I'm pretty sure the only reason he missed me was because he was rolling sub-10. That's true. Pretty low, so it's like... The thing is, so he gets a battle axe, a claw, and then if, if the first battle axe hits, he also gets an extra amount of damage. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that first battle axe hit, that claw, both would have hit me. <laughs> the third okay. attack just barely misses. The 67 would have done an extra. It's 81 plus 60 is just that first attack. Ooh, ooh, that's like half my health, guys. <laughs> he rolled crap on that, that on all the axe. Yeah, at, so the the same like, time, at the same time, it just proves the point that the spellcasting opponents are by far the hardest to deal with. Uh, those, like those Marilis. Those Marilis, like, holy shit. <laughs> Alright, so, I'm, I'm sorry, so we... I'm sorry, so we did level up. Was there a, a tier gain, or no? Uh, let's see. I do not think there's a tier on this. Let me check the... Check my notes. Okay, so you guys, what's your tier right now? Seven. Yeah, so you should be 16 slash seven. Okay. You may want to reroll that, you. Yeah. Much better. That's a little bit better. That plus an extra three from my uh, campaign treat. Yeah, sixteen should get you uh, what level eight spells now, I think. Yep. For sure, there's always one one level behind the the real casters. <laughs> um, as far as the stream goes, for those joining us tonight, thank you very much. As always. And we will see you next week. Bye. Goodbye, people of the internet. <laughs>